Hello and welcome to America's Heartland. I'm Paul Ryan. This vast stretch of prairie land that begins here in eastern North Dakota and stretches 340 miles west to Montana has fewer people mile for mile than any place else in the heartland. That's the start of a lesson in just how productive America's grain farmers are. Because here in North Dakota, wheat growers harvest some 300 million bushels each and every year. And in a state with fewer people than the city of Indianapolis, that's close to 500 bushels for every man, woman, and child. And the specialty here in the Red River Valley, Durham wheat, wheat that becomes pasta on our plates. Farmers here grow more than half the nation's supply, and we'll begin today's show with a look at just how they do it. It's an enduring American image, amber waves of grain under broad Midwestern skies. On an August morning near Starkweather, North Dakota, they stretch as far as the eye can see. I and my son farm 6,000 acres. More than 19,000 of the state's 30,000 farmers grow wheat. This will be my 49th crop. About 4,000 of them specialize in this, Durham wheat. This happens to be a good area for Durham. Scientists say the agronomy of the state is ideal for this hardest of the so-called hard wheats. That means cool temperatures, dark prairie soil, and open space. Lots of it. Dale Anderson's 3,000 acres of Durham are the result of half a century's experience. He's particularly pleased with this year's crop. The yield is up real good, and uh, then our prices are up too, so uh, we got sort of a, a double crop here, and uh, sort of nice for change. About 75 miles south of Dale Anderson's spread, wheat grower Roger Gushis is taking in his harvest outside Carrington. But there isn't much Durham in this year's crop. Just as Durham is picky about where it grows best, Gusha says other problems make the grain especially challenging to a farmer. It's uh, susceptible to just a little bit more disease. If you have too much wet weather, you can have some uh, quality problems. Wheat crops have long been plagued by diseases like ergot and black point. But a fungus called Fusarium head blight, or scab, has cost North Dakota growers an estimated $3 billion in losses since 1993. Roger Gushis lost his entire crop in 1994. Seems like our climate's changing a little bit here. We're getting just a little bit too much excess moisture. And because of that, we've changed uh, and, and started growing more spring wheat. Gushis is partnering with local experts to test a new variety of Durham wheat that may prove more resistant to scab. It will be good news for him and other Dakota Durham growers if those efforts pan out. Back in stark weather, Dale Anderson is halfway through a healthy harvest of disease-free Durham. For the last 15 years, we've had problems raising Durham in this, uh, well, in this state. Mainly because our weather system has changed a little bit, we get uh, hot, humid Julys. Uh, before that, as I was growing up and uh, up until the 90s, Julys usually were hot and dry. When you got a wet, humid July, you've got diseases working on it and bugs. So, uh, yeah, this year we had a fairly dry July. Here, you don't have to get very far away and they had some pretty wet weather. Depending on the weather, in any given year, the combines might come out anywhere from July through mid-September. Durham is a delicate grain. For the harvest, timing is everything. The grain has to be cut and threshed quickly. Not far away, the pasta makers are waiting. 